Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? I got a message from Google that I am running out of space in my free Google account. Have you gotten one of these messages yet? Chances are you have. Now, Google would like for me to start paying money for storage, and I'm not so keen on that, as I imagine you are not either. So today on Dotto Tech, I thought we would take a look at ways that we can put off that horrible day, that horrible day when we start paying Google for our storage. Google gives us 15 gigabytes of free storage with our Google account, and that storage is shared between Google Photos, our Gmail account, and Google Drive. Now, up until recently, we had a great deal because Google did not count any of our photo storage against our 15 gigabytes, which meant we could back up as many photos as we wanted into Google Photos, and then we never had to worry about paying for storage. But Google changed the rules, sort of like parents who suddenly decide at some point kids should start paying rent for their room. It's a rather uncomfortable and unpleasant comeuppance for those of us who are now being asked to pay, but I kind of get where Google is coming from to a certain extent. But that doesn't mean that I want to jump on board and suddenly start paying Google their ransom for the drive space. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at ways you can maximize Google storage, your free Google storage. And we're going to break it into photos, Gmail, and into the in, and uh, Google Drive as well. Now, if there's just one area or you want to jump ahead, we'll have chapter markers in the video so you can take a look at any of these areas. And we begin at one.google.com. This is a terrific web page that Google gives us, which is a summary of all of our storage within our Google system. One.google.com. If you're logged into Google and you go to this web page, you will be brought to a page that looks almost identical to this, which will tell you how much storage you have remaining. In my particular case, just a couple of gigabytes left. And they give you suggestions of what you can do about it and kind of help you through the process. Of course, what they're going to help you with the most is buying additional storage, but we are not going to go to on that path are we no 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 instead we are going to go through and we're going to free up some storage from google so that we can extend the life of our free account if you click on storage you will be brought onto a page which will give you a summary of what storage is being used by which google properties in this particular case a small amount by google drive a little bit more by gmail and the vast majority by google photos and i think most of you will have a very similar ratio of where your data is being stored and google photos is the real problematic one google photos because we've had it for free so long we haven't thought as much about storage maybe we've just started thinking about storage on it but now it is something we have to deal with so we will begin by dealing with Google Photos. And I have seven gigabytes in my particular Google Photos account. When I click on that link, it brings me into my Google Photos account. It doesn't help us much. You don't see a place to automatically reduce the number of photos or you have here or clear up space. Instead, what we do is we go under settings and if we go into the settings in Google Photos, right there at the top is where we deal with the size of all of our images and how we can start to reduce the space. Now, there's going to be two ways to basically clean up our Google Photos account. There's an automatic way, well, actually three ways. Let's say there's three ways. There's an automatic way, there's a manual way of going through, and there's a process that we can do for the future. And let's touch on each of them. We'll talk about automatically cleaning up your Google Photos. Now, Google will allow you to click on this Recover Storage button, which will go through your Google Photos account, and it will reduce the size of all of the photos that it can within your Google account to a minimum or to what Google considers to be the minimum resolution required for good quality photos. Now, if you trust Google, as far as that's concerned, you can go ahead right now and compress your photos, wait the period of time. It's probably going to take about an hour or so for it to compress the photos, and you should not see a difference. You certainly won't on screen. If you print out the photos, you might see a reduction in quality depending on the quality of the printer and the size that you blow it up to. But basically speaking, the resolution that Google is recommending is a pretty darn good resolution. Now, if you're concerned and you want to make sure you still have high quality photos uh, that you can resource if you need to in the future, you can go and you can download your entire library and store it and back it up on a hard drive somewhere so that you can always access the originals should you choose to. It's it's a fairly, it's not really a complicated process, but it's the exact same process that we have to go through to download and back up any of our different Google data. And I'm going to be talking about that at the end of this video. So if you want to know more about that, stick around to the end or jump to the end where I talk the, through the process of downloading the data and backing it up on our own local drives. So you can do this. You can uh, re recover some of the space through this. And I don't know how much space it'll recover for you. Everybody is different. The more manual process is when we go into manage storage. This gives us a report of uh, what type of data 
our Google Photos account is storing. And we can see here, a large files and videos, most of it. A small amount in screenshots, they break it out into these areas. A smaller amount for blurry photos and then unsupported videos. We can go through and we can clean up each of these areas, but it's a bit of a manual process. Uh, for large photos and videos, that's probably the most useful one and one that is worth taking a look at. When we open that up, our files are listed based on the largest to smallest. Now I've got thousands and thousands of files here, but if we take a look, I've got a couple that are a couple hundred megabytes each. These are videos that I've taken, probably ones that I've used for the YouTube channel here. So I could go through and I could delete these videos if I wanted to, and that's a great way to start. If you don't wanna delete them from your Google account, you might consider backing them up into a different storage media where, which is more appropriate for your large format video files. So that is gonna recover a lot of space. I think the majority of space that you're gonna recover in this process is gonna come from removing the largest files that you have stored, the videos that you have stored. And a lot of my videos are not even videos, but they're actually screen recordings that I've done for doing different demos. So in my case, I can recover a lot of space here and hopefully you can recover quite a bit as well. Now, as far as the other manual uh, manuals uh, cleaning up of storage, uh, you could quickly go through and mat clean up all of the screenshots and the blurry photos, but the blurry photos opens one other aspect of Google Photos, and it's really user error. It's the way that we have for a long time been taking photos. It's problematic, I think, the fact that we've had these smartphones for so long and it, there's, there's no cost to taking pictures. You take multiple pictures of every single opportunity because you wanna make sure you get a good one. And consequently, you upload duplicates or very similar photos of any, uh, of any photo that you take. And so you have multiples within Google Drive and that's what takes up a tremendous amount of space. Now, unfortunately, there's no automatic way for removing duplicates. It's something that we've been crying for. You'd think with all of Google's intelligence and algorithm that they'd come up with a way. I'm wondering if maybe they aren't all that uh, incented, incentivized to do it because if we upload all of these photos, we're gonna have to ultimately buy additional storage and they can make money. Whereas if they help us clean it up, they don't make any money. But that's a little bit of a conspiracy theory uh, but there might be some merit in it. At any rate, I'm not gonna hold my breath for Google to come up with a duplicate removal system. Uh, it'd be great if they did. So you can now go through and you can manually remove so all of the photos and choose the best ones, uh, which is gonna be a very time consuming process. I don't imagine very many of us are going to do that. So instead it's something that we kind of just have to hold our nose and recognize that there's a, a lot of wasted space within Google Drive uh, that we just aren't gonna be able to easily recover. But that comes in to the final point. We've kind of gone through now and we've cleaned up as much as we can. You can certainly delete all of the unsupported videos, delete all of the blurry photos and your screenshots, and you're gonna recover a lot of space. But for the future, to maximize the amount of time that we have access to free storage, a little bit of discipline when you take photos is what's called for. So you can take multiple pictures, but before you connect to Google Drive, to Google Photos in order to upload those photos, make sure that you go through and you delete the ones that you don't need so you only have your best photos. A little bit of discipline is gonna go a long way to stretching out that free storage as long as possible. So that's the photo story. Next up, let's talk about Gmail. Taking a look in my system and Gmail, you can see three gigabytes of space, a fair amount of space, but nowhere near obviously as much as photos. But what can we do to clean up Gmail? Well, when we click and open Gmail, there's a couple of easy ways to recover some space in Gmail. Now recognize one thing, that when you recover space in Gmail, you're gonna delete a lot of email for a very small amount of gain for the most part but something you can do that will save you up quite a bit of space right away is going to each of your inboxes and there within your inbox, you can, if there's nothing here that's important, say in promotions and where you just look at it when it's current, you can select all of that email that's within that and you can delete it. Make sure you delete it and don't archive it because if you archive it, it's still gonna count against your storage. Now, one of the kind of idiosyncrasies of Gmail is when you select all of the email in an inbox, it only selects the number of emails that's on that web page. So in my particular case, I have 50 emails per page, I think, no, 100 emails per page. So it's selecting the first 100 of these. It'll take me a long time to delete all 500 messages. I'll go, have to go through all multiple pages. So instead, what you can do is Gmail will always give you the option to select all of the email that's in the inbox 
itself. So I can select all 520, uh, 572 emails that are in my promotions tab, and I can delete them all in one fell swoop. Is that the right term? F fell swoop? I don't even know what a fell swoop is. But now I've deleted them all, and it's going through and it's deleting all of them. And uh, it's left with 52. I don't know why I was left with 52, but I will delete those. And now I have reduced the amount of email in my in, in Gmail by those five or 600 emails. They take up a small amount of data. And you're not going to see that reflected in your storage immediately unless you go in. You click on more and scroll down to your trash can. And in your trash can, all of those emails will still be there so you can recover them if you uh, if you deleted anything accidentally. And if you want to empty the trash at this point here, you can go and you can empty the trash immediately as opposed to waiting the 30 days till it automatically deletes. And that will free up a small amount of space. Now, the next way to free up a little bit more space within Gmail is to look for large attachments. Most of the storage in Gmail is going to be taken up from attachments that people have sent you. So you can actually, it'll make you feel a little bit like a hacker, I think. You can just type in has colon attachment larger colon and then put down the number of megabytes that you want. I'll put this the, this text in the description so you can just copy and paste it if you don't remember. But if you just do a search based on this, it will bring up all of the email you have that has attachments of that size. If I want to look for all attachments larger than one megabyte, I can do I can change the variable to one, and now I've got a lot more uh, e emails here that have these larger attachments. So you can go through and you can eliminate the emails with large attachments, get rid of those attachments and save a lot of space this way as well. Both of those will recover some space for you. Most of the space in Gmail is going to be taken up in a, in a mailbox called all mail within your Gmail account. Now I, I, I don't like how Google does this. They call it all mail. They call this 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 folder all mail, but it's really your archives. When you reply to an email, when you do something with an email and you send it to archives and you basically just save it, it's saved here in the all mail account. I wish they called this archives instead because I think people have a little bit of a disconnect there. But within this all mail account are all of the emails that are in my account. In my case, 81,000. This is my archive, my backup. There's a lot of useful stuff in here, but there's also a lot of useless stuff in here. So if you want to save even more space, you can choose to delete all of your backed up email or your, your, your archive. In order to do that, I think it's a good idea to first back up your email into a, a local hard drive, but recognize that it's not going to be very searchable from that point there. You're going to have to basically uncompress all of your backed up email in order to find an old email. So this is a rather aggressive way to save space, not one that I recommend. Again, I think overall, the amount of uh, the amount of space that email takes up, especially if you've removed the ones with large attachments, is very small, and the risk of throwing out something that you might need in the future is much greater than the benefit you're going to gain from a small amount of space. But it is your call. This brings us to the third application in Google, which is Google Drive, our online storage space, which in my particular case has a very small 1.6 gigabytes. When you click on the link here, it brings you into a really useful page within Google Drive, which is a all of the files in storage based on sorted by the largest to the smallest file. So any files that you have stored in folders in Google Drive, the largest to smallest are gonna be shown here. So you can quickly go through and you can determine which ones you can delete and which ones you should be retaining. So this is, a, this is again gonna be a fairly manual process. You can go through by visually by the folders and maybe delete folders that you don't need anymore. That's another way to go through Google Drive. But this is a bit of a more familiar system for us. We're used to going through our computer's hard drive and cleaning up space. It's pretty much the exact same process within Google Drive, is you're gonna to have to manually pick the files that you wanna delete, the ones that have the largest amount of, that are taking up the largest amount of space. Now, one thing I will point out, is within Google Drive, because it's an online platform designed for file sharing as well, you will also have files that are shared with you that other people have shared with you. Don't worry about cleaning up these files because if somebody shares a file with you, it does not count against your storage, it's because it's counting against their storage. So that's one th less thing to worry about as far as cleaning up your account. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna show you is how to download your files, how to back up your data from Google 
onto your own local system. Now, I'm glad you stuck around to this point in the video because this process is important well beyond just clearing up space within our drive. This is important for our own personal privacy and protection and understanding how Google uses our data and what we should be doing with our data, kind of taking ownership of our data ourselves. So this all begins by going under your profile picture and managing your Google account. When we go into the account manager, we click on data and privacy, and then we scroll way down on the page, I think this should be at the right, the top of the page, to download or delete your data. If we click on this, we're brought in to Google Takeout. And this is the place that we all have to know about. This is where we can access and download all of the different information that Google ha keeps about us. Now this is, there's an important legal consideration here. Anything that Google tracks that's yours, they have listed here. Any information they gather from you, you can access here. Your calendar appointments, your bookmark history from Chrome, your Gmail, all of that is backed up here. Now, it's designed to archive from this location and to back it up into a, into a transferable format so that you can open the data in an appropriate application outside of Google. So as you can see, there's 54 different things that, Google, that I can download from Google. And if you decide to take everything out, it's going to take quite a while for all of that information to be compressed and to be downloaded to you. But in order for us to just back up, say, our photos or our Gmail, I would start by deselecting all. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through and manually check off each one. Go down until you find the service that you want to download. We scroll down until we hit mail. We check it off. We can find out which formats it's gonna be downloaded in and what is included. And we can so choose to select everything from email or we can just choose to back up one of our one of our inboxes or one category from within email, but we I wanna back it all up. And now if I go scroll down to the very bottom, I click on next step and Google will inform me how they're gonna deliver this to me. They're gonna send me a link by email, which I can then download the data once it's been, uh, once it's been compiled by Google. And they tell me if it's a large file, it'll be broken into multiple files. And then I create export. And now what will happen is Google will take all of my information and it will start at this point here and it will send me an email when it's time for me to download the data, when it's there for me. Well, those are my best tips for recapturing some of that free space in Google Drive and maximizing the amount of time that we can use the free storage in Google before we have to start paying. Now, obviously, what you're going to have to do now is you're going to have to weigh the amount of time it's going to take you to do the processes that I just shared with you versus whether or not you want to pay a little bit of money to Google each month in order to not have to do all of that work. The choice is yours, but now you have the options. Now, I've just shared with you the ideas that I have as far as recovering space. If you've got a better idea or if I've missed something, please share it with me in comments. I would certainly appreciate it if I've missed out something. And with that, I'm going to thank you very much for spending time with me today. I hope you found this video enjoyable, useful, and if you did, a like, a share, and of course, a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. One last thought before I leave you today is every week here at Dottotech, we host a free tutorial webinar on some aspect of productivity or content creation. We call it Webinar Wednesday and they're fun, they're free, they're weekly. I invite you to join us at one of our webinars coming up in the near future. The links are here. Why don't you check that out? Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.